Again, this is one of those like extra steps we take for our customers. Are there recalls or TSBs for this vehicle? We will go above and beyond for our customers to make sure we get the most correct and modern repair. This is a 1997 Porsche RWB, Yoshiwara Yukaku. It's here at the shop. A lot of people have asked, what's this car doing here? So interesting story about this car being an RWB. This car was originally built in 2017, I believe, but Nakai-san did not build this car for Ricoh the first time. Somebody else contracted out Nakai-san to do the RWB conversion. For some reason, the project stopped and unfortunately this car was stuck at somebody's shop or somebody's storage. Fortunately, Rico, one of Rico's friends, knew he wanted an RWB and uh, luckily he got wind of it and basically pulled this car back up almost from the dead and finished the car. Uh, from what I understand, there was no wire harness, no engine, no transmission. So yeah, the car was really close to staying in hibernation forever, but you know, luckily with Rico's ownership, Nakai-san came back a second time and finished the RWB conversion. There was a big push, huge push by Rico last year for last year's SEMA in November to turn it into what we see here. Long story short, what we've been doing to the car is buttoning up what could not be done in time for the SEMA show last year and also to get the car ready for Rico to enjoy on the street, take to track events, uh, make sure the car is drivable, safe, and reliable for him. Why don't we take a look at the work we did? Again, 1997 Porsche 993 Yoshiwara Yukaku. Why don't we take a walk around the car? Again, a lot of stuff to clean up could not be done in time for SEMA. These lights, some of them did not fit correctly. So again, in the rush for a SEMA. Um, some of the hardware had to be just secured to the fiberglass. What we did was add the correct plastic inserts so that, you know, this can be a serviceable item. You can take this light in and out as needed. You know, now that there's the correct plastic factory insert um, and you're not going to damage the fiberglass over time. Um, again, getting these lights to fit correctly because this is a RWB bumper and this is a factory Porsche light. You can't expect miracles with fiberglass. Yeah, a lot of just maintenance work. All this body kit hardware, just making sure that all of it was secure, all of it was the correct hardware, if it needed Loctite, or if the nut certs needed to be changed or adjusted, we did all this. Walk around here. New for SEMA last year is the GT3 wing that Rico actually had in storage for a very long time and uh, debuted finally for SEMA last year in November. Um, driven this a lot since then. Um, also been on a few photo shoots. I remember the last shoot in SoCal with Rico, um, some of the wing hardware was starting to back out. So we replaced majority of the wing hardware, got nylocks on the other side. Make sure the wing hardware is not gonna back out anymore. We did some cool stuff to the tail lights. Why don't I pop open the rear bonnet and we'll take a look. One time we were out at a shoot, I opened the hood to look at the engine. Felt like an idiot. <laughs> So if we take a look at the factory Porsche taillights, again, getting these guys to fit properly. So adding those uh, square cut OEM inserts to the fiberglass where these taillights inserted. Cause again, a lot of this is the RWB kit. This taillight assembly fit like really wonky before. So, so even getting these taillights to line up like this, that was a ordeal in itself, but yeah, we got it to work. Um, nut and bolt check the engine bay. We made a creative decision that the paint marks wouldn't look so good um, in the engine bay. So we're gonna keep deciding. I know Rico wants to complete the amber shroud um, to match the amber fan shroud on this guy. So when we get the um, complete shroud for the bottom of the engine, we'll decide if we're gonna paint mark that engine bay. <clears throat> it's gonna be tough to tell, but a lot of the other things we did just making sure Again, comprehensive nut and bolt check. All the fuel lines are secure, nothing's leaking. We rerouted some hoses like for the catch can and some of the breather setup in the vehicle. Custom cage built by Marcus Fry Racing. Um, 
Marcus's work never ceases to amaze me. Uh, one of the key focal points about this car, of course, is the clear roof. So I believe, and Rico can please correct me if I'm wrong, one of the biggest focal points and inspiration for this build was actually to have a clear roof so that from the bird's eye view, you could see the entire interior of the car being stripped out, you know, race car-esque. You could see all the beautiful cage work and the painted interior. And yeah, it feels so cool just to sit in here. It, it does not get old. So Nikai-san's signature. CAE shifter from Germany. This thing's pretty cool. I had to look up the instruction manual for this because it's also, it feels great, but it's also very complicated on first assembly. So again, comprehensive nut and bolt check, making sure everything on this shifter is adjusted correctly and tight and it's not gonna come loose, right? Pretty interesting. They have you safety wire this pin for the shifter. So we did that. Um, like I said, comprehensive nut and bolt check. Um, pretty hilarious if you look down here. There's earplugs because the car really is that loud. I feel like when it's Rico's birthday or next Christmas, I'm gonna buy him some real gold earmuffs so <laughs> he, we don't have to keep running through these disposable earplugs. This is Speedwire wire harness. Um, I believe there's some Patrick's Motorsport stuff in the engine bay. Again, just comprehensive nut and bolt check. All these panels. If we look down here, all these cool Renline pedal, pedal cover assemblies. Um, I think they call this a racing heel plate. All new wire harness for the car. That means engine and chassis. Uh, very expensive MoTeC setup um, back there to run that engine and the Rassant induction system. Also pretty fun story, last day before Marcus was gonna drive this car to SEMA, I helped final assembly of this car. First time for me seeing the limited edition RWB seats and steering wheel. So majority of the engine and transmission is solid mounted or solid bushing. One piece that Marcus and Rico had a really tough time and couldn't find in time for SEMA was actually this piece right here and Porsche has a strange name for it. We'll just call it the rear transmission mount bracket. Right. Um, we've got solid race version bushings from PowerFlex and th those will replace these two big bushings here as well as these two on each side of the transmission mount. And that'll just complete solid mounting of the engine and the transmission. Doesn't make sense if everything's solid mounted and then these have the OEM mounts in them. So Nakai-san first put on the RWB kit in 2017. Um, Rico's put a lot of miles on the car since then. It's also been a long time since then. So a lot of these stands have either worn down or um, broken down over time. So we've remade all the body kit stands for this car and replaced the stands that were missing. You can take a look at one up here. Uh, hopefully I did Nakai-san justice. You can see this is one of the original stands off of the car. Uh, you could tell it is much thinner than what I used. Uh, my thought was that you know, these RWBs have gotten heavier and faster over time. I mistakenly thought that maybe, you know, these couldn't take, you know, that kind of abuse anymore. So I sourced some thicker aluminum rod. You know, it turns out to my mistake and uh, doubting Nakai-san that the theory behind these thin rods is that if something happens, you actually want these rods to bend or break and not the body kit itself, which totally makes sense. But we're gonna keep these rods in there for now. We'll just keep walking around the car. <clears throat> a lot of these rubber trims and accents that had come loose over time, um, we re-secured them. If there was missing hardware um, on the body, we replaced them as needed uh, or put in some more durable hardware, more weather resistant, and including some nylocks to make sure that the hardware wouldn't back out. There's plans to uh, get the headers and the exhaust Cerakoted at some point. Um, I think Rigo's still deciding on the color, but the, the color for the exhaust is TBD at this point. But it'll be nice to get these Cerakoted to um, not only look good, but also protect the rest of the engine area, like the coil packs and the wire harness. Again, pretty cool, solid mounted. Um, it looks like back when this was at uh, Marcus's shop, they took the subframe out 
and replace the the subframe mounts with all solid mounts some oxygen sensor connectors we fabricated some mounts for those so these guys won't bounce around again just like some small touches that you need if you're really gonna drive the car but in the rush for SEMA could not get done in time. Can't blame anyone. As per usual with a car that's really driven, nut and bolt check and paint mark on all the items. And then we'll just point out a few. Both of the drive shafts on each side, always on every drain plug on the car. Forgot to mention, we also did a transmission fluid service on this G50 gearbox. Uh, custom fuel lines, you can also see the hard line to AN adapters. Um, we ended up having to reseal one of them uh, I mean, normal stuff that you find bugs uh, when the car gets really driven, right? Um, resealed one of these guys and of course double checked and paint marked all our fuel lines. Very G-Wagon-esque, the way how tight these, in, these uh, body panels open and close. When uh, Rico first showed me the car, I was very nervous to open and close the doors just because how firmly they open and close like that. All right, and if we take a look under the bonnet, I should say the front bonnet. Gas tanks up front, again, the theme, comprehensive nut and bolt check. Aftermarket front strut tower bar, um, we adjusted these correctly, the himes and the rod ends. Um, again, the theme, nut and bolt check and paint mark. It's because of this car is a driver, we wanna preemptively catch if something is coming loose. Um, pretty trick red line battery mount, uh, Marcus Fry also added a battery quick disconnect. You know, one of these like race-esque features that is also really important for like the safety of the car. Odyssey AGM battery. Um, again, just making sure all the terminals and the battery mount, they're all nut and bolt checked, paint marked. I'm gonna sit down next to this humongous wheel. The rear wheel's even bigger. Lug nuts, super important on the car. In the rush for SEMA, the wrong lug nuts were ordered for this vehicle. How do I know? So normally you have a acorn style or tuner style lug nut. Those fit majority of aftermarket wheels. Um, Asterix, right? Majority of aftermarket wheels take that acorn style. Porsche is a little bit different. Porsche normally uses this ball style end lug nut. These extended ball style lug nuts must be very uncommon because these were hard as heck to find. These were only available in titanium. We got these from Augment Wheel Company in Canada. We had to wait three weeks for these guys. Like a lot of German cars, normally these come with lug bolts. So they must be ball and lug bolts. This 993 has had a stud conversion, so we need lug nuts now. It seems like normally people run the factory Porsche lug nuts. I've done a 993 stud conversion before on another customer car. We use just the factory Porsche lug nuts. But you know, both Rico and I like this extended style. Um, aesthetically, it's pleasing. It's easier to put on the lug nuts. Again, must not be a very popular thing. Extended ball seat lug nut. Cause again, these were hard as heck to find. AWC was the only company that I could find that made these. So very excited. Now all proper lug nuts on these wheels. Safe again. <laughs> Idlers is a uh, time attack race in, it's not a time attack race, it's actually a wheel to wheel race that they hold in Japan. And so Nakai-san on all the RWV vehicles, um, even Nojima-san on his AE86s, they spray paint this uh, Idlers logo on all the tires. So just some of the focal points, right? The Idlers logo, the uh, Workmeister center cap, and then also the uh, the Workmeister sticker. With most vehicles we get at the auto house, or I would say almost all vehicles, we do a multi-point inspection, which includes an exterior light check. Specialty vehicles are no exception. And in some cases, we need to make absolutely sure that all the lights work. Headlights are a big safety issue. We noticed the headlights were really dim. And before we went into a deep dive into the wiring, one of the easiest things you can do is just take out the bulb and see what it looks like. And that's exactly what we did. Oddball, these take an H1 for these projector low beams. I noticed that the headlight socket, um, where these little clips go that retain the low beam bulbs, um, the tang, the plastic tang that holds these clips in place were kind of distorted and you could tell, you know, when something like a bulb radiates a lot of heat, plastic gets distorted. We found that there's a factory Porsche repair kit 
which is basically like a plastic snap-on tab to better holding these clips. I guess it's common due to the headlight bulb heat that the plastic original retainers can break off. So Porsche actually has a factory, what they call a headlight repair kit for this car. We got that on order from the Porsche dealer. And so um, not only will our bulbs be more secure now, but you know, if you can imagine if this clip is not properly in there, that's also the ground circuit for that headlight bulb as well. So, you know, new bulbs plus properly seated, win-win uh, all the way. Again, this is one of those like extra steps we take for our customers, right? Like, is there a updated or superseded part? Are there recalls or TSBs for this vehicle? You know, off the top of my head, I can't think of it, but there's definitely been like factory parts superseded with an updated part or you know TSBs or modern factory repair kits like for these headlights that we will go above and beyond for our customers to make sure we get the most correct and modern repair. I wasn't gonna just throw bulbs in it and be like, send it bro. All right, so a couple cool Rico Easter eggs. Inca Cola is the national soda in Peru. Uh, Rico is part Peruvian. Funny enough, I have a customer who's also Peruvian, saw Rico's golden style sticker and was like, do you know what that is? And I was like, yes, I know exactly what that is. And so funny enough, the customer brought us a whole six pack of Inca Cola. Matches the car, doesn't it? I wonder why. It's been about a month now, but it feels like I just came back from Japan with Rico. One of the more memorable stories for me is some of the Japanese nationals reaction to Rico, right? So. Just being around this car reminds me, Nakai-san lent us his personal 997 RWB. Pretty wild in a residential Kashiwashi to have that big ass, literally big ass car <laughs> driving around and uh, in our little designated hotel parking spot. What I'm trying to get at is there was a, basically like a parking guard or a parking monitor the first time we checked in at the hotel, we were in the RWB K car. Um, I think after that, we got the RWB. So there was a discrepancy on like why the license plate changed, but fun story, right? Um, the guy, Rico was the only name written in English on the parking list. And um, my Japanese is, I'm very poor Japanese, but I had to translate anyway. And he asked me like, Namae, like, how do you say the name? And I was like, and I was, uh, I had to like phonetically say it in Japanese, like, Richado. And he was like, <laughs> his face was like, Richado. <laughs> he was, and he said, like, wow, Kakui, like, that name is so cool. And so we parked the uh, 997, and Richard was like, oh yeah, I, I raced Porsches, and like, and then, you know, this is like Nakai san's car. And, he, and the whole time, he, the dude was like so enamored, like, oh, kakoi, kakoi, for, like cool for everything, right? And at the end, I'm talking with the parking guard, and he was like, he was talking about Rico. He was like, your name is cool. Your car is cool. The way you dress is cool. You are so cool, man. And I was like, wow, dude, we just made this Japanese guy's day. <laughs> so as you guys can see, big comprehensive once over on this car. It's been here for a few months now. There's a lot that we did that I'm missing. But, you know, as the caretaker of Rico's fleet, of course, this is going to be a great driver, run well, run reliable. Um, he's always impressed when he takes the car for the first road test. He was like, wow, you took a lot of play out of it. Or like, wow, it feels so much tighter. And I was like, I'm usually like, yes, it also took a whole lot of effort. And that's why the car was here for so long. But, you know, the end result is absolutely worth the sweat equity, so to speak. Um, big thank you again to Rico for entrusting us with your fleet, especially your RWB. I've known Rico for his RWB before I knew him as, you know, one of my 886 brothers. If you guys can't already tell, I am a huge RWB fan, so absolute privilege for me to work on this car. Um, pretty funny, again, another story. Uh, first day we touched down in Japan, we went to RWB headquarters right after dinner. And, Rico, and we kind of had to get Nakai-san's blessing about, hey, my mechanic is going to touch up some things on the RWB. Is it okay? And I just about died. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully we did Nakai-san proud. Again, very big gracious thank you to Rico. 
very big gracious thank you to Nakai-san, Nojima-san, all the RWB brothers that were so welcoming to us at our time in Japan. Um, really hoping to go back and yeah, just big thank you to all you guys again. And yeah, thank you guys for all the support. Uh, more cool builds, more cool cars, more cool content to come. And we'll catch you guys next time.